Welcome, Pathfinders, to the Find the Path actual play of the Tales from Dark Moon Vale. Episode Hello. four. <laughs> number four. Whoa. The fourth. Lucky number four. <laughs> is four usually lucky? I, I was about to say, is four usually a lucky number? Because I don't think I've ever heard that before. Not in uh, Chinese mythology. Yeah. Or in Japanese mythology either. Yeah. Unlucky yeah. number four. Yes. Woo. Gracious. Jordan, well, we're gonna make it's it. Lucky. Jordan's game, unlucky number four. <laughs> Ever, to be fair, every number is unlucky for me. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's because Jordan's unlucky, and we're playing unlucky episode number four. Jordan should have good luck this session. I'm giving him the luck. I, I don't. I don't think two, I, I two negatives hope. make a positive in in this situation. I think that's I don't only know. Heather Mythos. We'll see. <laughs> it only goes oh, into a maybe deeper she decrees negative. it. Okay. <laughs> you know, when you're rolling d4s, four is lucky. That's fair. I, you're sure. not wrong. Fire. Yeah. Boom. But if you step on them, that's unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Doesn't the matter Frigger what numbers on them. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's both lucky and unlucky until you step on it. Uh, Schrodinger's D4. I've got it. <laughs> but we'd almost gotten Gracious. murdered in a witch's hut with a cauldron. And now we're yeah. making our way towards the dwarven ruins. Well, I mean, before the witch's cauldron, uh, <laughs> you, you had also fought a river drake. Yeah, he was looking a little uh, a little under the weather. Yeah. yeah. A little plague-ridden, um, if you will. He was mm-hmm. covered in cordyceps. This is how The Last of Us begins. Yep. Mm. Uh, the Last of Us Galarian Edition. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh. true. That'd be yeah. real bad. Right. It's The Last of Ye. The Last of Ye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Grim is like the older guy and Clove is like the young girl who's immune somehow. So you're Ellie and he's Joel? Yeah. Is that how that's working? Sure. Anyway, <laughs> moving forward though, uh, I think we have a world to save. And by that's that true. I just mean a small town. A horrible little town but hey, we live there so I guess we don't want it horrible to be destroyed. Horrible town full of horrible people. <laughs> well, the people there are actually pretty cool. <laughs> some of them. Most yeah. of them. I was going to say well, that you know that there's got to be some people though that are working with the Lumber Consortium and like them and like, you know, they're the bad people. Yeah. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I remember correctly, I think that town has an alignment of neutral evil. It does. Yo, in fact, it's really? <laughs> oh. it some evil. sort of evil. There's got to be a lot it's, of evil people to get your town's alignment to be neutral evil. It's because yep. a lumber consortium wow. brought in all their people. It is yeah. neutral evil. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, neutral evil. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all need Jerks. to immigrate. Wow. Is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, that requires money, but the lumber consortium won't You're pay too us. Good for this town. We're all going with Amaranth to the forest. <laughs> yes, come back to Taldor with me. Or at least just lawful. Yay. And we also found a dead Jagare in a tree because those people get everywhere. Oh, yeah. I, I, it's true. I do appreciate that detail of just like, oh, it's another Jagari. I mean, <laughs> ugh, just another one. So <laughs> many of them. Somebody needs yeah. to call the hotline and tell them there's another one here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's like a reward for like, you know, finding their missing Jagari. 100 Jagari finder. <laughs> so yeah, they've got money to freaking burn. <laughs> Now I'm just like, there's a whole group of Pathfinders that their only job is to track down the Jagares and find out what happened to all of them. That's Dude, like Jagari <laughs> squad. You know uh, what we need to do is we need to play a group of Pathfinders that are just all Jagari. <laughs> just pool our resources together and conquer or, the world. Or we're just like really the, fangirls of the Jagari. You know, like people that like the Royals, we're those people, but for the Jagari. <laughs> <laughs> we're the followers. Yes. Have you heard about the new Jagari, baby? Anyway. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh gracious. You recovered their remains, though, and then continued onward to Ulamets' hut. And yes, uh, Heather is correct. There was a cauldron there. It didn't like you. And a turnip uh, doll. And a turnip didn't doll. didn't like it either. Well, this one was not a prince. I was disappointed. Well, they can't all be princes. Sometimes True. they're just turnip dolls. Uh, sad. <laughs> I mean, we, we sad. have bamboozled pretty hard by it. And we it's found true. the that rat tail adage. root, so two out of three... You did alongside a mummified dwarven hand. I Great. don't know if anybody in particular is carrying that right I kind of really want it just to put graffiti all over the town when we get back. But yeah, I think right cool. now Grim is carrying it. Mm. Yeah. I'm not wearing it. I'm just carrying it respectfully. Fair enough. Yeah, you, want, you don't have it dangling off your belt or something, you know? No. And I've read The Monkey's Paw. <laughs> oh God! That that and using a thing named after a sacred dwarven rite of passage to do graffiti seems kind of blasphemous. Yeah, um, well, it just I seems like chaotic. Also, chaotic. not a dwarf. Yeah, and not Jeez. a dwarf. 
Oh, I mean, she was informed of the tradition, though, by a dwarf. Yeah, <laughs> so you you know what you're doing. You can't play the ignorance card when it was told explicitly what it was. Yeah, okay, so she'll yeah. come up with some crest that's insulting to the Lumber Consortium and just brand the town as her town. There you go. <laughs> You do like the the you know the bat signal type thing, and it's like this is my town. Exactly. Just imagining a, a life mark. of Brian thing you right have now. You failed this city. Oh, no, it's like, more of a life of the Brian guards with the come graffiti. by and like correct how mm. to do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, see what you've done there is. Uh, <laughs> I believe I after even... finding all of that, we were on our way to the dwarven monastery of some evil dwarven deity of awesome funness. Draskar. Yeah. Draskar. It's kind of a cool name. Yeah. Though. Even the evil dwarves sound cool. Okay, I gotta play an evil dwarven cleric now. He's really into. Well, uh, mm, Heather, you might like him. I mean, he shares, I think, torture with <laughs> Zonkathon. I was gonna say, Heather likes Zonkathon, so. I he mean, likes yeah. torture, so maybe you're yeah. into it, Heather. I mean, it's, he's more like into self torture than say, torturing Heather other people, <laughs> but. I, yeah. Look, I'm just weird. a really nice person in real life, so I like the evil fantasy things because it's like. <laughs> so she different likes, from how I She likes I to am. live out her evil fantasies that she can't exert in real life on her mm. characters. I haven't played so. an evil character in a while. It's coming, y'all. Anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I just appreciate that the dwarven idea of an evil god is the god of laziness. That's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, there there isn't much more evil that a dwarf would do than just being lazy or making, like, less than excellent tools. I'm so lazy in Which actual life, both. too, so, you know. Dwarves <laughs> can definitely just murder people, so I think they can do a lot more evil stuff than just being lazy. They can, but usually they can be they don't. excellent at it. Uh, however, um, you began your journey to Droskar's Crag, uh, to the location of the monastery. After fighting the uh, sick uh, Drake and then exploring the hut and everything, it's I don't think we'll be able to make it there today. We'll probably have to rest. It Let's is, find a uh, place. Yep, it is just a couple hours until nightfall. You're able to make a little bit of distance, but honestly, yeah, you're probably not going to get there unless you feel like traveling through the dark. So are, we, are, do um, we need to, like, uh, scout a campsite? or Yeah, we, do we like, need to make a survival to a check cave, for that? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, you can take a look if you'd like. Go on ahead, and for those of you who would like to, make a survival check. Yeah, I'd like sure. to keep an eye out for a cave because that's be more of like a natural shelter rather than taking the time to actually build one. Without bears, preferably. With friendly bears, preferably. I rolled real good. I mean, I Amaranth too. has a pup tent. It's just not big enough for the rest of you. I rolled a four, or sorry, I rolled a 19 for a Celestine will squeeze in there with him. <laughs> Every time you say oh, pup okay, tent, then. I think it's a tiny little tent for a little puppy. I don't think pop-up <laughs> tent. I think a little doggy okay. tent. So, sorry, Jessica, I was too busy laughing at uh, <laughs> Celestine's uh, rather clumsy attempt to <laughs> to flirt. And, um, hey, he's that, that not wasn't picking her. up on the subtle clues. She's got to start being more assertive. Uh, You've known him less than yet. a day. That hasn't day, happened girl. I got a 23 is what I'm saying over here. Okay, I'm Clue sorry. Clue focused I, on the work. <laughs> okay, uh, Amaranth rolls a 13 for a 16. Okay. Uh, Celestine rolls a 15 for an 18. Okay. Estrella rolls an 18 for a 22. Nice. Okay. A 17 nice. for a 21. All right. So, yeah, I guess Amaranth and, uh, Amaranth and Celestine, the two of you are probably having a discussion about pup tents and maybe, you know. <laughs> and maybe it is big enough for two. <laughs> no, Amaranth is just like, no, there's no way. You yeah, cannot possibly like, you, you don't understand. Like, it's already too short for me. I have to go into the into the fetal position to fit inside of it. <laughs> and then My legs already Reggie. stick out the bottom like the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> anyway, uh, are you up for some just friend spooning? <laughs> <laughs> oh, how, how tall is Celestine? <laughs> uh, she's five foot seven. I mean, that's snuggle size. Like, you can make that work. <laughs> snuggle size. Snuggle size? Snuggle size. <laughs> what does that mean? It's a specific size category between 5 foot 4 and 5 foot 10. What is the dimension of snuggle oh, size at this? There's, there's being s small enough to be easily snuggled in the spoon position, I guess. I don't know. I just made something up that sounded funny. I love it. I just snuggle was size. thinking about it like a snuggle size candy bar. It was like, wait. <laughs> oh, man. 
<laughs> At any rate, though, uh, so yeah, the half elf and the elf are probably busy chatting with the elf, obstinately not understanding what it is that Celestine wants them to do. She's just flirting, y'all. <laughs> in the meantime, though, Grim, Clove, and Estrella, with their head more on the game, on business. The level headed teens and elderly gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is Grim, you could definitely say is level headed. I, you know, but it sounds like uh, Estrella and Clove had to grow up pretty fast. So, so <laughs> the three of you managed to find a cave without much issue. Sure. It isn't considerably deep, maybe about 10 feet or so, but at the very least, it's enough to protect you all from the elements. It's not too far out of the way you need to go. Hmm. Good news, Celestine. We won't have to share tents. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gracious. <laughs> a crestfallen Celestine and, <laughs> and I suppose a <laughs> blissfully unaware <laughs> Amaranth. I mean, I, apparently she likes the 18 intelligence because it's not the 12 charisma that's attracting her. <laughs> She's a sapio sapien. Wait, what? Yeah. What? Sapiosexual. I, right. yeah. I was trying to think of the word. My brain. Isn't that it? That's what, what the is sapiosexual? One you're it's into the brain. In, yeah, oh, you're into intelligence. Right. Okay. Huh. A sapio uh, sapien is like some sort of creature that is a brain. But a sapio sapien. <laughs> sapien is an intellect devourer, clearly. Yeah, yeah obviously. Fine line that's, that's between its loving brains name. and being a brain. <laughs> I am a giant brain. <laughs> oh my. The brains I'm winning again. Ah. Crag? Is that it? No. Crang? Crang, thank you. I was like, the one yes. Ninja Turtles. No, oh, I went Futurama, ah. but fair enough. Yeah. I went Crang. <laughs> that's my childhood. That's my. That's your 90s reference right there. And oh, now yeah. we will leave for absolutely no reason. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so there's a cave. Yes, there is a cave. Uh, it's not exactly spacious, but it's enough to fit all of you and, you know, not have anybody actually laid out on top of each other. So that's always nice. Um. This this seems fine. It's good, defensible. Well, uh, I guess we should probably get a fire started and maybe have some dinner. Oh, well, I'll help with the fire then. It's not a bad idea. We should set up a watch schedule as well. I agree. How do we make um, cooking? Is that a thing? And what does it run off of? Is that a craft? Nah. I'm just a halfling. We don't have, we none of us have the cook background. <laughs> Can I make a dwarven lore check for a traditional dwarven mushroom salad? I, I'm just imagining a dwarven mushroom salad is just like a instead mushroom of in like, a bowl. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say it, it, it's inverted. So what it is is it's like instead of the leaves, you're gonna put in your mushrooms, and then on top is like one single sprig of uh, you know lettuce or something. And then the uh, ale what, is is the vinaigrette. Yeah, ale vinaigrette. There you go. You know what dwarves <laughs> probably make amazing are those uh, like the stuffed mushrooms you get at German restaurants, oh, where they're yeah. like the mushroom oh, caps, yeah. but they're stuffed full of sausage. sausage. Yeah. Mm. God, oh, yeah, good. Anyway, Clove is going to cook us some dinner because she is an herbalist and herbs and dinner and she has survival. That's the plan for me. Is it a chicken with 12 herbs and spices? <laughs> um, I thought it was it 11. Is in fact, it is, in it is fact, 11 herbs uh, and spices. <laughs> river Drake with some fresh mushrooms. <laughs> We're not eating the River Drake. Remember, I burned that because that thing has got black scour. <laughs> I like uh, when we went for the most American food we could think of. We went for KFC. <laughs> I will point out that uh, uh, the dwarf over here went for mushroom stuffed sausage, sausages, and salad. Which also and really salad. just makes me like talking about sausage makes and ale makes me think of Germany, which makes me want bratwurst. Oh, bratwurst! It's oh true. yeah, got that con uh, save against what is it? Poison if you got the rocket yeah. or the strong gut thing or whatever. The spotted mushrooms are the spicy ones. <laughs> and by spicy, yeah. I think he means don't poison. eat those. Yeah, the don't, poison don't. adds a nice spice to it. Don't eat those. Sure. Clove is cool taking any watch, so whatever watch y'all need her to take. Uh, Grim would like to be up for the sunrise. I guess, I guess uh, Amaranth will take first watch because um, I need to sleep for eight hours. I, Astraea will take whatever watch. She's just kind of happy to be useful. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> How many watches do we need? Probably what? four. Four. Yeah, it's so usually that'd four. That'd be four. So between me, Clove, Amaranth, and Grim, that's four. So then we I'll trade take off middle another of the night. night. Celestine's yeah. gonna sleep then. <laughs> <laughs> and we've learned something about Celestine right now. <laughs> She's like, you're fine. So if we want to delve into the rules here, 
and God wow. knows we do. Oh Lord, uh, here they we actually go. have an entire they have an entire chart in the rule book now about setting up watches in Pathfinder Second Edition. It's amazing. Oh, he sounds way too excited about that, guys. I live with this. You are so, such a nerd. Uh, <laughs> if if we have a party of five, which we do. It means that we need to rest for 10 hours and the duration of each watch will be two hours. So we will equally divide the duration of the entirety of the watch. Cool. Okay, so Celestine does have to get up. (laughs) Y'all suck. (laughs) (laughs) It is the most efficient resting times. Then I suppose I'll take the one before Grim. Um, I'll find some firewood. I'll wander out and find firewood. Yes, let's have a scrumptious dinner and then get ready for another busy day tomorrow. Yep. Well, we've been making extremely good progress. Hopefully we'll find the mushrooms and be on our way back to town tomorrow. No, it's only been two days so far, so we're making good time. I'm hoping we don't have to fight any more cauldrons, though. That was a bit strange. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I hope that we find what we're looking for really fast and don't have to fight any more things, because that's really scary and I don't like it. You get very angry when you fight. I just get angry sometimes. I can't really control it, but I promise I'm not going to hurt anybody, probably. Um, I found firewood, though. Celestine raises an eyebrow at the probably, but yeah. kind of shrugs and starts spreading out her bedroll. Unfortunately, it is, it is very likely that there will be something occupying the monastery when we arrive. Dwarven structures are sturdy, and more likely than not, it's withstood the the passage of the years rather well. I mean, that says something for its architecture. Yes, but unfortunately that means that it's also a uh, a prime location for squatters and others to occupy. Well, we've heard all the stories about how the veil is dangerous. I'm sure something will be there. Bandits, possibly. Maybe Mm. evil dwarves. I hope not. Grim glowers. Let us hope that we are not so unfortunate. Wow, that, that took a very serious turn very quickly. Yeah, that turn, it was dark. The Dergar are not something to take lightly. Oh, I thought she just meant like dwarves that were evil, not like Dwergeranders. Can we roll a a whatever to know what the Dwergar are? Because I don't know how common that knowledge is outside of dwarves. Yeah. So it is a society check. It is to recall knowledge, so I'll go ahead and roll that real quick. But I'm guessing Amareth is the one who wants to roll. I do, and I have a seven. I mean, Celestine will roll too. Ah, no, why? I dropped my dice. Oh, no, 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 my dice. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Both Celestine and Amaranth are familiar with the Durgar. You have heard of them. You do understand that they're exceptionally rare on the surface world, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they can't exist up here. Are they the only ones that follow this evil deity, not surface well no dwarves are really surface dwarves but you know what i'm trying to say well actually there is a we dwarves have a variety i would be considered a surface dwarf as far as our heritages are concerned but there are some who are desperate enough to follow the dark smith but he is the patron of the dargar well. they are when we when my people performed the quest for sky there were some that doubted torag's vision leading us to the surface there are some that decided to stay and eventually weakened as they had separated from their families and their clans. They fell one by one to the encroaching creatures down in the Darklands. And then eventually they turned to a darker power to try to seek salvation and were corrupted by its influence. The Dergar are foul, evil, monstrous individuals with no heart or soul. Have you ever faced one, Grim? I have had the displeasure. Celestine pats Grim on the shoulder. Well, I'm sure if there was something like that out in the woods, there would be stories all throughout the Vale. Well, well not if there's no survivors. They are extraordinarily skilled at avoiding detection. Um, but they are, much as their master is, almost intrinsically... <laughs> no, the easiest term would be lazy. They are slavers. Most of them, they would not work if they can force someone else to work for them. So we would have heard of disappearances if there was a large number of them. Hmm. Well, um, considering we found those dead guys, I guess, you know, we should be careful anyway, because they seem to have armor and stuff and they still ended up tied up in a tree. It's true. There do seem to be quite a few more people than I was expecting in this area of the woods. A whole two dead people? Yeah, as I say, it's not I actually mean, it's a large many. wood. 
Well, it is a large wood, though. To be running across just anybody is rather uncommon, I would think. We're, There's all sorts of stories the... about the veil. Oh, yeah, and we're we're following the we're following the river. And if you were going to go through the woods, you would follow the river so that you didn't get lost. Plus, water. Water is life. She raises a very valid point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's point. the rule of three. You know, three uh, minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. And I think it's uh, three hours without shelter. Something like that. But it's the rule of three. I learned that rule. Did you learn that rule from Mr. B at the schoolhouse? Yeah. Oh. We did a yeah. camping trip. Uh, uh, granted, yeah. we didn't really go in the forest, but it was like to, on the edge, you know. Yeah, and he talked for a long time. Yeah. yeah. But it was we, fun. We dwarves have a similar rule, but it's the rule of four. Our constitution is higher than yours. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> <whatever>. <laughs> we all have diehard as a bonus <laughs> We all have diehard. Uh, <laughs> four hours without a beer. <laughs> well, we should yeah. rest up for the evening. Celestine would put her bedroll next to Amaranth's. Like, not right next to it, but next to his. Not that <laughs> obvious, but like, you know, in that subtle way that you like, you, you're just a little bit closer to him than yeah. like you are to you everybody know, else. Like when you're in high school and you always sit next to your crush, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, Man, well, you were braver than I was. Amaranth. But mostly because of Reggie, who she thinks is cute and wants to play with. <laughs> so Heather brought back a crap ton of memories for me, by the way. So thank you yeah, for that. Yeah, thanks for that. Sorry. High school, oh, everyone's oh, favorite, favorite time. Oh, God. So, uh, anyway. yeah, I guess we'll eat some dinner. Um, see if we have any leftover fish. Yeah, yep. you probably still have a little bit left from the day before. Eat the rest of that. Yeah, you know, it's funny. We were talking all about uh, eating those razor crows and everything, despite the fact that crows are notoriously terrible tasting. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the well, razor in these crows take the edge off. Ah. <laughs> oh, how did she that, that was excellent. fantastic. That was excellent. Great. I was going to say, uh, birds welcome. of prey in general I'm aren't necessarily tasty either. That's true. <laughs> and then there actually is the whole comment about like eating crow and everything else yeah. about how bad they taste. Mm. Yeah, true. But at. There's actually a really interesting myth pertaining towards it, but I won't get into it now. Hmm. Save it for the after, no, the campfire chat. Hmm. All right, but Amaranth is on the first watch. Let's see if indeed. his elf eyes see anything. <laughs> I mean, I sleep with my weapon near my hand. <laughs> That's probably wise because, um, yeah, perception's not really something he's good at. Oh, wonderful. Well, it's not spe- I think it's something only two people in the party are actually good at. <laughs> I'm great at it. Me I'm, too. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Oh, okay. Are you expert at it? I am expert at uh, it. So say. I'm also an expert. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. I'm just trained. I am not, and I have no wisdom score, so I'm sitting on a big old three. So, Amaranth, you settle down, probably check in with Reggie real quick just to make sure she's not, you know, a familiar still. Reggie is still not a familiar. <laughs> she squeaks. Oh. Um, <laughs> Amaranth is again frustrated and sad and spends his watch popping a little bit more magic into her that poor in lady. fairness your familiar does cuddle with your ankle Woo! She's that very makes it cute. slightly better she hasn't run off like I would expect most sugar gliders to so there's that are we not going to address the popping magic into her what do you have like just, a Pez dispenser with yeah. magic pills <laughs> yes that's what <laughs> exactly little sugar magic. cubes you know those little <laughs> Yogurt snacks you give like hamsters. That's immediately where my brain went to, like those infused <laughs> with magic. I never had a hamster, so I did not know that was a thing. Yeah. It's like Reg- Reggie, guess what? When I was in town, I sold off all of my spell books that I had from when I could cast high level spells and only kept my first level spell book, and then I got these magic beans. The center was guaranteed to turn you into a familiar or my money back. It's true. You're They're familiar, familiar just now, right? Off, so. <laughs> <laughs> How many of these things is it going to take to make you a familiar, Reggie? <laughs> Reggie's like, I'm full. <laughs> <laughs> just pokes more into her little fat cheeks. <laughs> oh. She starts burying some, saving for the winter. <laughs> she we hides come them back, in her cheeks and way back out. There's a giant beanstalk. We're like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't our quest. <laughs> that's a problem for the Jagares. Jagares. <laughs> Jagares <laughs> handle that one. Jack Sounds Jagari. like something they get up to. Jack Jagarian. <laughs> <laughs> Ross got that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at any rate, though, Amaranth, 
other than uh, keeping an eye on Reggie and keeping an eye on the woods, you notice nothing as the night passes. Cool. Everything seems quiet and calm, and I suppose you go to wake Astrea for her watch. I do so. <laughs> he uh. doesn't realize we're being watched. <laughs> uh, good. Everybody's safe and sound, and Amaranth can go to sleep after he gets off his watch, innocent to the fact that he's probably going to be murdered in his sleep. Well, uh, anything I should be aware of? No, nothing at all. Very peaceful. Really? We're in, we're in the veil. Nothing? Well... No, I mean, I didn't hear or see anything. Were, were, you, were you looking? <laughs> well, yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Why is your he squirrel says so holding fat? his super fast, <laughs> fat squirrel. Estrella <laughs> uh, keeps her, her rapier nearby and uh, takes a seat at the mouth of the cave and keeps her eye on any suspicious happenings that could be happening that Amaranth didn't notice. <laughs> Very well. There's, pro- there's so like just a, whole, a uh, whole army, like just like outside of his low light vision range. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, just, you know, a whole hobgoblin force is assembled and they're just kind of waiting for somebody to notice them before they attack. Oh, geez. Because that's a thing hobgoblins do. Yeah. We're in <laughs> the veil. Wait. We're screwed. <laughs> All right. So, Estrella, you settle in, draw your rapier. Probably as much to inspect it and make sure to maintain it as to actually be ready in case something happens. As a fighter, I'm sure even if you're not meticulous in every other aspect, taking care of your gear is one of the things you make sure to do every day. Mm -hmm. As you settle in, about maybe a half hour or so into your watch, you hear the distant sound of howling. Hmm. Wolves, of course, are known to the Vale. It's not exactly uncommon to hear them. Uh, you can go ahead and make a survival check if you'd like to see if you can tell where they're coming from. No, because I rolled a nat one and got a five. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I, th- I think that's actually a critical failure. But uh, uh, as far as you can tell, you have no earthly clue where they're coming from. You actually keep somewhat of a weary eye out because you suspect they might be coming from much closer than it sounds. Curses. Other than perhaps a night spent anxiously watching the woods, waiting wolves to come pouring forth at any moment, (laughs) nothing else seems to happen other than the sounds continue. Scores of wolves. Hundreds of wolves. (laughs) Yeah. You're fairly certain they've organized some sort of armed wolf force. (laughs) Yes, sir. They formed into regiments. Yes. They're armed with metal teeth. I don't know. Um, This is turning into uh, Brotherhood of the Wolf up in here. I'm not. No, I was thinking that. Narnia, but all right. Yeah, <laughs> they have animal fights in Narnia. Narnia. Oh yeah, that that I mean, are of most of them just talking animals? I think so. Now I am going to point out: wolves do not typically attack. They are actually fairly docile creatures. Unless rabbit. Yeah, I just hate that trope where the wolves always attack. Yeah, um, true. But your watch passes as uh, you probably grip tight with your rapier before it comes time for Clove's turn. So I figure she goes and. Estrella walks over and kind of nudges your shoulder a little bit. Five um, more minutes. Mm. Uh, well, it's 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 your turn for the watch, though. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. I, I think you should uh, um, definitely keep a close eye out. Uh, I've heard a lot of howling, but I don't actually have any idea of where it's coming from. No, no, I really don't. Ask. No. Was it him? No, uh, no, because it was definitely coming from outside the cave. I mean, he's been muttering for the last two hours. Okay. I mean, I did critically fail my perception check, but I'm almost sure it was outside the cave. <laughs> well, it was the survival check, not the perception oh, okay. check. But yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Clove kind of gets up and stretches a little bit and takes her machete and goes and goes and leans against the cave kind of opening area. If she sits down, she might go back to sleep. Well, um, good luck. Uh, if anything happens, you know, holler at us. I'll yell real loud. Will you? Um, pro- You're just kind of quiet, so maybe bang something, too, just in case. But if it's scary, I'll probably yell real loud. Okay. And then Estrella will go retreat to her bedroll. Amaranth in his sleep lets out a little. No, no, I can't. No, no more pheasant, please. Estrella resists the urge to kick his foot as she makes her way to the bedroll. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I don't dance. <laughs> <laughs> what is the stream? 
Oh, God. Okay. Clove, sadly, there's no coffee available right now. That's fine. You've got teenage energy. You should be fine. It's middle of the night. <laughs> I didn't get to sleep for 12 hours un- uninterrupted. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Yeah, you do want to sleep I for don't 12 know. hours. Yeah, the teenagers who come to the library drink coffee, like, all the time. Yeah, but they're, they're like, just modern the teens. Stuff. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know if that makes much of a difference. I'm a poor teen. Teens. I don't... I, tea would be great. I probably mm, know a thing enough. about tea. Yeah. True. Clove probably makes delicious tea, honestly. Yeah. A nice clove tea? Ah. Ha. 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 Good ha. spice. Mmm. Clove, you settle in for your watch... Probably blinking off sleep, occasionally rubbing your eyes to make sure you stay awake. All the common tactics that, you know, a teenager might attempt to use. No, this is important. I got (laughs) wait. uh, Um, Okay, so maybe that was just me. Maybe that was just my upbringing. But anyway, (laughs) slapping yourself in the face. Yeah, I did that a lot growing up. (sighs) Yeah, probably not good at. Uh. At any rate, though, Clove, you do hear the distant sound of howling, and you can make a a, uh, survival check. All right, I shall endeavor. I roll a 16 on the die. For Clove, that means a 20. Very nice. Very good. With a 20, keeping your ears out, you're able to figure out two things about the howling. The first is that you're certain it's coming from somewhat to the north, but mostly to the west of you. This doesn't necessarily initially fill you with concern, except you can also tell it's probably a couple miles distant, Mm. which would place it somewhere near Droskar's Crag. In other words, the place you're going toward. Hmm. Well, as long as they're not heading this way, Clove will let everybody keep sleeping. But the rest of your night passes uneventfully. And it comes time for, I believe, Celestine's turn, if my list is correct. Yep, I will go wake up Celestine. I imagine she wakes up like Anna in Frozen. You know, her hair is just a giant rat's nest. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> um, You're a tosser she, in your sleep. There's, she, there's, she there's looks wolves. up at you bleary-eyed. <laughs> there's wolves to the northwest. Um, uh, I guess listen and make sure they don't come um, closer. They shouldn't bother us. She rubs one of her eyes absentmindedly and drags herself to the entrance to the cave. <laughs> Hope not. She'll Good lean night. up against the cave wall and keep an eye out. Probably trying to piece together what the <laughs> Amaranth is talking about in his sleep. <laughs> you know, oh, Rizzy, you've gotten so big. <laughs> it's, a, it's a party gun wrong. <laughs> I'm going to name my face into quite full. <laughs> She, she glances over at Amaranth. <laughs> and watches him sleep. <laughs> oh, that's not uh, creepy. super creepy, no, though. She's I watched gonna, you while you were sleeping. I mean, I she's was She's going to actually pay attention outside. There might be wolves <laughs> and who the heck knows what else in the veil. Minus two perception <laughs> penalty. No. <laughs> You're not the DM, Rick. Sure. Sure. Oh, shots fired. Ooh, shots I'll, fired. I'll point out I haven't been a DM in over ten years. Oh, shut up! Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the return volley. Boop. He's technically correct. Fine. The You're not the correct. DM, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> the audience uh, can't see me sticking my tongue out at you. <laughs> I can feel it. Anyway, Celestine <laughs> takes her watch. So, Celestine, uh, the first thing, of course, you notice is Amarith occasionally muttering in his sleep about pheasant and dancing and whatever else, I guess, he's talking about. Is Reggie asleep, too, or is she being a squirrel? Reggie is conked out on her back for a second. You almost think she's dead, but she just looks super full. (laughs) She's got a little, like, protrusion coming from her stomach. She's very self-sugar and they're just bloated up because of all yeah, the milk. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. And yeah, you, you, you can still see her breathing, but you don't think she's getting up for a while. She's like, oh. She's trying to digest. I, if she could talk, she'd be like, I think I had too much magic. Oh. <laughs> too many magic beans. <laughs> Taking a listen, you do on occasion hear howls coming from the distance. You don't see anything approach the camp, though I would also allow you to make a survival check if you'd like. 
Yeah, Celestine rolls a six for a nine. Yeah, those are wolves, probably. Yep, there are distant sounds of wolves. You cannot confirm or deny that Clove uh, was able to hear where they were coming from. <laughs> oh. Oh. But you definitely hear them. And the rest of the night passes uneventfully for you as well. At the, uh, she probably, when she figures it's been really close to two hours, she probably gets fidgety, like, oh my gosh, I can go back to bed soon. Oh my gosh, sleep. <laughs> and then she'll go nudge uh, Grim awake very carefully because dwarf, and she's not sure if he's <laughs> he just going like to grab a hammer. Wake up swinging. And, <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, he, he just opens up one eye. Good morning. So, Mike, considering his age, uh, you know, reach up a hand to get a help up. So she would help. She, uh, Celestine would take his hand and help him up. So Thank you. Clove heard wolves, and so did I. She thinks they're coming from the direction of the monastery, but I couldn't really tell. They were far off. No, most of the time wolves are peaceful creatures and will leave humans, dwarves, and others at peace so uh, well and if you I'm get bored amaranth's talking about dancing with a pheasant or something i'm not quite sure she starts to lay down <laughs> on her mat <laughs> no i have uh i have plenty of to keep me occupied <laughs> so grim makes his way out i imagine the fire starting to dwindle a little low so he'll uh, he'll start heating up some water and all the rest of that you know boiling some water to make sure it's good for everyone's breakfast when they wake up and Mm-hmm. sit there oh. uh, polishing his shield and everything as he watches out towards the force. Celestine passes out almost immediately. With her background, I imagine she's one of those people that she can just sleep anywhere she needs to. No, yeah. the Duke says you're too young to date. No. Well, the Duke. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Grim just smiles, thinking about his younger days. <laughs> and then just continues to, to tend to his gear and keep an eye towards the force. Grim, you're able to hear the sound of wolves as well. The distant howls that punctuate the sounds of crickets and other insects chirping away in the slightly lighter darkness now um, as the sun is just beginning to rise. Smile watching the sunrise. In the wear light, um, Grim, you do hear... Um, I'm curious, did you just say in the wear light? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was, I was just like, I, I don't know if that's just a term I've never heard before. I was or... thinking about how that's kind of nice, like it's a light that's changing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that, like, yeah. I, I didn't know light. if that's what you're actually going for, if it was like in the waxing light, I don't know. Uh, apparently, it's an old English uh, meaning man light, so it's hmm, the interesting. The heck is man light? Well, I mean, where, oh, where wolf is man wolf, so. Would that be like man-made light, like a candle or? Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like where like, knows? That's anyway. cool. <laughs> I need to bring that back. Um, <laughs> at any rate, uh, going ahead and I am making a nature check for you because it is to recall knowledge. So. Yeah, I'll oh, recall oh. some knowledge. You yourself can make a survival check if you'd like. Oh, yeah, sure. That's twice in a row I've rolled a 17. That'd be a 21. Very nice. Very good. With a 21, yeah, you're absolutely certain that they're coming from the north and west the sounds are largely dying down by this point. Of course, this makes sense as wolves are traditionally hunters in the night and they sleep during the day. So yes, you're not surprised. <laughs> what sweet music they make. However, you do note a voice punctuating the wolf sounds as well. Thinking it over, you're not certain one of them is a wolf, despite their their close kinship. Uh oh. It's like where wolf. There, uh, wolf. <laughs> there, castle. Oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> Ross got it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen Young Frankenstein, please go watch it. Yeah. It's so Lots funny. Of fun. It definitely was Gene holds Wilder up. in that one? Yes. I thought he was in that one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he's yes. amazing in that. Mel Brooks, yes. Gene Wilder. Oh, my good gosh. <laughs> You're so good. At any rate, though, um, thinking it over... There are some differences, and you don't think werewolf initially. I mean, you know, the thought, of course, crosses your mind, but no, this seems like something different. You're fairly certain off in the distance you hear a warg. Oh. Wargs are intelligent cousins to wolves. And in this case, they 
are intelligent enough that they oftentimes rival humans as far as, well, their their mental capabilities. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Humans aren't that great. No. Um, I say as a human. <laughs> I'd be more impressed if he rivaled an elf. <laughs> Okay. Oh man! Elves get a racial plus two bonus to intelligence. Yep, they do. Oh, okay. Extra Sorry, that was smarts. a deep cut. <laughs> Pathfinder, <laughs> <laughs> not. Wow. Not all of us have the core rulebook memorized. Jeez. <laughs> you don't? How that's, do you lose? That's Rick's superpower. I he have Harry Potter memorized. memorized. <laughs> but yeah, off in the distance, you're certain you hear one. Hmm. Grim considers alerting the others, but how far off in the distance do I feel is off in the distance? Not far. You suspect maybe half a mile or less. Uh, considering the, the noise of the voice, though, admittedly, it's a little hard to tell just because sounds are distorted in these woods. So it could be a little closer. It could be a little further, but you don't think it's far. Okay. And you said it's dawn is breaking. Yes, it's coming close to dawn. Okay. Grim will, uh, will get up and stand in the cave entrance, but... Yeah, keep his back to the cave, keep his eye on the forest. They probably wouldn't attack at daybreak. In the early light, you do sense a creature in the distance. You can just barely see with shadow, or in the shadows rather, that there is a canid form. It seems to glance at you, eyes flashing in the darkness probably mm. reflecting the early morning sunlight or what little of it there is still so far. You think mm. it's noticed you. Do I know what languages uh, a warg usually speaks? Yes. Uh, traditionally, wargs speak goblin, orcish, and taldane. So I'll step forward a little bit, weapon in hand. I'm Volgrim Onsvar. My compatriots and I are traveling through here. We simply wish to collect some items to help our people. We have no reason to fight with you. We would simply like to pass in peace. Did uh, C Celestine told you that the howling was coming from the direction of the monastery, right? Yeah. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're talking to Mr. Warg. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Warg. Assuming that's, it's Mr. That's Warg. That's why I'm asking him to let us pass peacefully. It's, yeah. Yeah, but I if can make a diplomacy check if you like. The creature tilts its head. It's a strangely almost dog-like maneuver, but it certainly loses some of its charm as you see large teeth in the early sunlight. It then turns and runs away from you. you better run. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what Grim yells after it. <laughs> I'll make you, you into coward! a cloak. <laughs> oh God. Immediately getting Jurassic Park flashbacks. You know, one of them coming out to distract you while the other two come in from the sides. Um, clever girl. Clever girl. <laughs> clever girls. Uh, Grim will take a few steps back, not turning his back on the woods and stand in the, uh, the cave entrance. Celestine snores softly in the background. You stand in the cave entrance as the rest of your watch passes without further issue. The distant sound of howls dies completely. I'll turn back into the cave. Make my way far enough in so that I'm you know, close to the center of everyone. Dawn has come. We should get ready, eat something, and head off. We had a visitor in the night. Visitor? What kind of visitor? Was it Amaranth's mm -hmm. pheasant? What? What <laughs> pheasant? I don't own a pheasant. <laughs> Reggie? No, it, it no, appears Reggie's that a, you're... Uh, squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie's not a pheasant. <laughs> it appears that your, uh, your guess pertaining towards wolves was correct. But they also seem to have an alpha that's something more. Are any of you familiar with wargs? Are we? Are we, Are we Ross? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me uh, roll some checks real quick here. In this case, um, Celestine, you're familiar with them, though the rest of you are not really certain how a warg differs from a wolf. You do know that they're technically two separate creatures. Beyond that, you're not certain. Ooh, that's not good. I mean, I've heard of them, but I don't know anything about them. They're, they're extreme, just like wolves? They're extremely intelligent, often a little bit larger than their kin. They're capable of speech. Mm. Oh, really? Maybe we can just ask it to leave us alone. I, well, I don't know if asking it's going to let the wolves understand us, though. A uh, ward can oftentimes control wolves. Or at the oh. very least, they can communicate with them. Yeah, Grim nods, slinging his shield back over his shoulder. 
Uh, Ward possesses an intelligence commiserate of that of a person and the ability to lead other wolves. I believe he visited us and I spoke to him briefly. I explained that we were here peacefully seeking items to help our people. Well, did, you, then... did you tell him where we were going? No. I simply <sighs> said we were passing through his territory. Well, Clove thinks she herds the wolves near the monastery. It's a good chance they live nearby. Hopefully the ward conveyed to his pack to leave the squishy ones alone. Well. Squishy. My experience with wargs have always been negative. Well, that doesn't mean every experience has to be bad. It's true. Many of those aren't responsible for what they've done. Oftentimes, goblins, hobgoblins particularly, will capture wargs, raise the puppies as servants and guardians. I wonder if it's connected to our friend from the other day, then. Oh. It's possible he seems to have a predilection towards animals. Yeah, be mean to them, that poor fox. Well, well yes, but also training those ravens. We should be careful, then, because um, we didn't have a good time with that guy. No. So eyes peeled mm. as we go. <laughs> we should also keep an eye out in case there are any goblins or anything like that in the region. Goblins other than this hobgoblin we ran into. Yeah, we'll hear them singing before we see them. In my experience, goblins could be shockingly quiet when they're ready mm. and dangerous in numbers. And sometimes just nice. getting better and better. Grim grips his hammer a little bit, staring out the door or out the cave entrance. Well, well, we should prepare you ourselves. You guys installed a door on the cave? Jeez. <laughs> well, it was a long morning, and I felt particularly industrious. Yeah, we live here now. <laughs> yeah. Gracious. Dorvin, you walk in that craftsmanship yeah. is fast. It's our yeah. new summer home. There's a big stone door with one of the archways and the speak friend and enter and all the rest of that. Um, nice. Yeah, like a secret hidden entrance and everything. You had time to like yeah, do all the mechanics. just carved into the door. During my two-hour watch, I went ahead and dug some uh, mithril veins in the surrounding mountain. Uh, Gracious. Would anyone like mithril daggers? Yes, please. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> I'm yeah, trying honestly. to bring up my blacksmithing skill. <laughs> okay, Skyrim. It'd be nothing but iron daggers. I forged 500 of them this morning. But my blacksmithing's at 99 <laughs> Actually, that's, now. That's Australia's specialty. Mm. Oh, daggers. really? Well, yeah, she's... true. Yeah. She works in the forge. We're learning mm -hmm. While we're while everyone's eating breakfast, Celestine sits down next to Amaranth. You know you talk in your sleep. Oh yes, I've done that most of my life. You were saying something about dancing and a pheasant and that the Duke's daughter was too young to date. <gasps> That's scandalous. Oh really? <laughs> oh. Oh. I must have been remembering well, almost another life at this point. I uh once tutored a young Duchess. Her father discovered her magical abilities and didn't really know what to do with her and uh, called in an expert. Oh, my. You were the expert? He kind of like looks Please tell me you did not date your student. He, lo he looks like crestfallen. <laughs> that was 60 years ago. She'll be a grandmother at this point. No, I, I didn't date her. No, I, I taught her. How long did you tutor this girl for? Uh, I taught her for 15 years up until she got married. And then she just didn't learn anymore? Well, no, she'd gotten her powers under control, so she was off to do noble things, and mm. I decided that I needed to move on. I tend to do that every couple decades. It's a little bit disconcerting to see your students become elders way before you are. Mm. I could imagine. I trained many in my time serving at the Forge of Torak, but they were dwarfs, so it's easier being amongst your own people. Well, that's a rather grim outlook, ha -ha. she says, and then kind of quirks an eyebrow like, oh, hey. <laughs> ba -dum -bum, ba -dum -bum. <laughs> no. um, let's get going, because wolves are waiting for us, I guess. Close, like, I'm tired yes. of this role play, and then stands up and marches <laughs> off. <laughs> I was like, you make me sad, old guys. Let's go. <laughs> oh, it's, so cruel. it's so cruel. You know, Grim pets Amaranth on the shoulder. I do understand what it's like to... To watch those around you pass. And I can understand the, the appeal of moving on, seeing new places, changing your outlook. But mm. there are things to be gained from settling down, is embracing that, family. Is that why you stopped teaching magic? Is that why you haven't done magic in, what, 50 years until two days ago? A little bit, yes. I 
the thing with magic is most magic is temporal. It only lasts for a certain amount of time. Even a, a summoning will only last temporarily. So I, um, I wanted to create something that would last. So and that's I why turned you to turned art. to art. Yes. Um, if you were not going to do magic anymore, how come you have a squirrel that you were trying to make a familiar? Yeah, it seems kind of con- contradictory. <laughs> oh, I mean, I just never done a familiar before. It doesn't change the fact that uh, the magic is still part of him. I do not go on crusade or fight for the church anymore, but I still pray. Oh. I still practice in my swordsmanship in case it's necessary again. Amaranth just uh, Amaranth has just gotten a little rusty. Well, and he'd also have a pet that will live as long as he will. Oh, is that how that works? Reggie does look a little chubby this morning. Chubby? I don't know what you're talking about. She looks <laughs> perfectly fine. Hardy and hail to me. <laughs> Reggie is conked out right now. Um, you oh notice that she only ate about half her breakfast. Oh, dear. <laughs> like, he, like, experimentally pokes Reggie's tummy. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Amaranth, I think you've overdone it. <laughs> he, like, he like, takes the rest of the food and like puts it back into his uh, into his food container. You know, her stomach's probably only the size of like a like an almond. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it appears I've put four. <laughs> four have you, have you ever actually, um, you know, taken care of animals before? Oh, I mean, back in Kionan, we looked after all kinds of different animals, but um, but you, not not people there. You. Um, no. H- how about you just, I'll, Clove kind of tentatively <laughs> reaches over and takes Reggie. I- I'll just, she can sleep here for, for right now. <laughs> uh, I know a lot about animals. Do you? Uh-huh. Uh, do they have many um, of these types of creatures here in Darkmoon Vale, though? Do we have oh, sugar right gliders in Darkmoon Vale? Please say yes. Yes, there are some. <laughs> Uh, they're not exceptionally common, but they're yes. Out, they're there's rare, not that many. but you can find them in the Vale. And there's regular squirrels. Plenty mm. of those. They're just brown and they don't glide. I suppose I did never look at any animal husbandry books to see how to take care of Reggie. That's an oversight on my part. I'll have to remedy that next time I get to a library. I could just tell you while we walk. Yeah, Clove could teach you. I would you. appreciate that, Clove. Okay, I, I teach Amaranth a little bit about how to feed squirrels with my training in nature. Yeah, I could certainly do that. I didn't it know sugar necessary. gliders were native to Australia. Yes, they are. Huh. Mm. Which is why having them in the States is so ridiculous, because you have to import them. Yep, they are. Mm. Yep. It's going to ruin our ecosystems. Eh. Oh, no, we uh, <laughs> I was just going to say, as far as having them in uh, Bandaran and everything, to be fair, there's all these freaking Tasmanian tigers running around the River Kingdom, mm-hmm. so... <laughs> Why not? But Grim will walk alongside Amaranth. So, I know amongst elves, they refer to those who live amongst human as forlorn. Is that something you consider yourself? Yes. Um, any elf who's spent enough time among the shorter-lived races eventually has to see them pass. How long do elves live? Uh, several hundred years. Wow. My original students have, are long dead from when I originally taught my first batch of humans. Um, may I, uh, well, do you mind if I ask, it, how, how old are, are you? I'm only 205 years old. <laughs> only? Uh, that's about middle-aged, um, mm. for an elf. It must be nice. I mean, it has its... Plus, as I've gotten to see much of the world, but... You can be happy is... among the shorter-lived races. My mother was quite happy with my father. Oh, I'm sure I could. It's just, um... There's something about developing a relationship with a, an intellectual peer, and then, unfortunately, having to see their passing. It doesn't get any easier with time, unfortunately. Yes. I think if it got easier, they'd probably say something about you. It's not very good. Hmm. I suppose that would... So I think the fact that you still feel so strongly about it is a good thing, and you should focus on the fact that that is a good thing. <laughs> it is why I appreciate the the humans, especially. You have such an outlook on life because you have so few years to enjoy it that you want to just have everything all at once. Humans and halflings. And she halflings live pretty... Halflings deep. live a little bit longer, yeah. Yeah. It's true, though, that, again, I'm always impressed by how industrial most humans are don't have the time to 
take to perfect an art form the way that the dwarven people do. I feel mm. like that's kind of a backhanded compliment. No, it's not it does sound as rather one. rude. I oh. more intended it as I'm always impressed by the ingenuity and um, oftentimes the creative nature of humankind. We dwarves tend to be static, if you will. We have traditions, we follow these traditions, but human generations change so quickly that they incorporate new ideas. Take, for instance, this democracy. He kind of gestures around like the woods around him, but Andorin as a whole. Oh, yes, because that's working lovely in Falcon's Hollow. I think it needs some work, but right. it's not a bad idea. Yes. As far as being forlorn is concerned, I can certainly, again, understand. Amongst the dwarves we refer to are, I think we earlier had a mention of surface dwarves. And amongst the dwarven kind, they're known as the Ergoxen. The what, what? The Ergoxen. Bless you. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Goldoxkin and the Holtoxkin dwarven people view those of us on the surface as being somewhat like elves view the forlorn. We live amongst humans. We oftentimes spend more time with them. I spend a long time living with my underground cousins during my time at High Home. But I missed this. He gestures off towards the east. I miss the sunrise and the feeling of wind on my face. I don't know. Sunrise for me means time to work. So. Well, if you're a dwarf, then time to work is a wonderful time. Yeah, but not when you're being forced to work. It's different when you're doing it for yourself. His countenance kind of darkens and he nods. Yes. Once again, we go back to the eye of Droskar and ceaseless menial toil. A person should be able to pursue something that they love and take pride in. You should be able to. Not happening anytime soon. Not in this town. It's kind of happening now. It's true. Clove is right. This adventure? Yeah. I mean... I, I guess so. I wasn't really supposed to come on this, um, but that's kind of why I did it. <laughs> the rebellion of youth. Well, I have a, I have a tendency to like to prove my uncle wrong. Ah. Oh. Family squabbles then. Every day. Family is important. I can only assume that these squabbles happen out of a place of love. Uh, doubtful. Probably more of a place of greed. Ah. Uh. Wait, isn't your uncle the the magistrate? Uh-huh. Uh. He and I have uh, have had a lot of very colorful conversations. Uh, most of them end with me uh, yelling at him and uh, storming out because he won't do anything. Mm. Yeah. That's unfortunate. But you should not be so quick to give up on family. Well, I don't know. I, I've pretty much kind of given up on convincing him, so I'm just working around it. Hmm. Well, I do not know your situation, but if there's anything that I can do to help. I don't know of anything yet, but if I think of something, <laughs> I can I can bring it up. Well, you get into a run fight. Run for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I could run, run for mayor for one day. <laughs> <laughs> Assassinate the leadership. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she doesn't like her uncle, but I don't think she would murder her uncle. <laughs> ah, good. We haven't gone that far. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe manslaughter, you know. <laughs> You just wouldn't save him if he was about to fall into a wood chipper. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> That's messy. I mean, I, I, I think she probably would save him still. He's still her uncle. I mean. Let me check. Yep. Yep. Chaotic good. I think he got to be. Go hitman here. I think he got to be neutral evil to let people fall on the wood chippers. Yeah, that's sure. Probably. Intense. I can't be bothered. <laughs> At best neutral. Yeah. But yeah. So, I mean, Grim will, will just kind of look over towards uh, Celestine. And I don't know exactly what you do in town. I, I don't really do anything in town. I, I try oh. to avoid town. Why? Because it's an awful place. But not everything's awful. What oh, everything say? is awful. I take offense to that. I live in town. <laughs> she everything is point. awful. <laughs> everything's awful. The, all the Lumber time. Consortium likes to stick their nose where it doesn't belong, so it's easier if I just stay on the outskirts. Uh, I see. Why do you I, stay in town? Uh, yeah, if you don't like it, just leave. few questions I need answered, but I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon. What do you do for work? I hunt, sell the meat and the skins to some of the local businesses. Makes enough money to get by. And where do you stay? Hmm, 
around, usually just in the forest. And then when it gets starts to get cold in the winter, I'll find one of the huts in the abandoned lumber yard to stay in. Grim strokes his beard and nods. Well, it sounds like you're living your own life. I respect that. If, however, you find yourself in need of some employment, harvest season is coming up. I could use someone with a much longer reach than me. <laughs> she smiles. I'll think about it. I just... Hmm. Where I go, payday tends to go, and I don't want him poking around your orchard. Well, I mean, well, he probably has to go there anyway. No. Well, let's simply say that intimidation tactics don't work particularly well on the paladin. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. Every time he tries to come, you know, our house isn't exactly uh, the right height. Uh, and so it's really funny to see him have to bend down anytime he comes over. That is the one problem with the surface. Everything is just so big. Mm-hmm. And the doors are so narrow. Everything seems right sized to me. Well, of course. Well. But there is a shack on the edge of my property. Perhaps it's nothing much to look at, to be perfectly honest. It's maybe two or three steps away from collapse. I just haven't had the time to go out there. But if you're Mm. looking for employment... She would pat him on his head. uh, I would ask that you not do that. That's a little degrading. I meant it as an endearment, but I'm sorry. Shoulder's good. She leans over It's mostly the uncomfortable thing that I go into town and then children keep asking to rub my head. Strange and awkward and Well, he's bald. It's because I'm bald and for some reason people like to touch bald heads. I don't know what it is, but it's a strange thing. (laughs) Again, I wasn't truly offended. I would just say that maybe patting people shorter than you is not the best way to to earn friendship. I'm certain that Estrella can agree with me that patted on the head is gets a little old. Yeah, or people with the the short nickname. <laughs> well, all of that aside, I suppose we should keep going. Mm-hmm. Yep, we go. We make our way <laughs> to the fort or to the dwarven monastery. We should keep an eye out. Hopefully the structure isn't occupied. Most dwarven structures, even monasteries are built to withstand a siege if need be. Even if if uh, nobody's in them, they can be defended. Well, in my experience over the years, in the Candlestone Caverns, dwarven structures will oftentimes not remain abandoned for long. Like a Goblins, bunch of orcs? Goblins, Durgar, orcs, kobolds, lizard folk. So stay alert is what you're saying. Hmm. Troglodytes once I faced. tigers and bears, oh my. Animals, rarely. <laughs> Although, actually, I do remember a dwarven keep that had a uh, boar and her piglets had moved in. Oh. That's kind of cute. Well, they're cute until the they were chasing after. Did you have bacon? Ragar. Oh, no. Oh. I was traveling with Ragar at the time. He was a friend of mine. He's the greatest warrior I've ever known. Caught the boar by her tusks, wrestled her to the ground. They had an understanding after that, and we went on our way. Intelligent oh. creatures, pigs. Okay. Um. Again, it's probably occupied, and if the wolves are in this area... I would watch the tree line, although they're mostly nocturnal, so... They can climb trees? I thought they didn't. No, watch the tree line. Oh. The, the edge, edge of the of forest. The... Yes, exactly. Okay. Not, not the, not the treetops, unless we're dealing with some sort of wolf-sugar-glider hybrid. <laughs> oh, that would be adorable yet terrifying. Yes. I've heard of owlbears being some sort of horrible bear-bird hybrid. Paizo people, Ow. if you're listening, we need this in the next bestiary, a wolf sugar glider hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> or owl wolves. Oh, jeez. Owl, owl wolves would also be terrifying. There's I've always heard. some wizard that has to make something creepy and weird and new. Flesh yeah. warping's fun. I've recently heard Is of it? the dread owl cat. Ha ha. Ha ha. But I understand they make in entertaining games. <laughs> 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 Heather yeah. got it. There we go. Uh, Heather just now um, got it. I got it before that. <laughs> I was like, yeah. It's not a competition. <laughs> I know. It we is fight now. To the death. But it's funny. <laughs> All right. We go but, to the woods. Or no. What? We go to the monastery. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Over You're in the, the hill woods. and through the woods yeah. to the dwarven monastery we, we go. Yes. It's true. Just picture <laughs> Celestine skipping along in a red hood. Over and under and through mm. the woods. <laughs> to... Death we go. Anyway, um, to Draskar's house we go. It's never good when the (laughs) DM says, or when the GM says that. Death. So you continue 
walking along the woods here as you approach the edge of the mountain range, continuing onward toward Drosgar's Crag. Of course, to your left, the woods continue. I believe all of you are keeping an eye on the tree line, uh, just to make sure that no wolves start coming your way. Though on your right-hand side, you notice the deciduous trees of the Dark Moon Vale give way to evergreens as you approach Drosgar's Crag. Also, mm. I just like saying the phrase deciduous tree. <laughs> yes. It's fun. Sorry, I've been speaking so much as Grim. I'm getting a little gravel there. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, welcome to what I sound like after two hours of Octavius. <laughs> we. You're almost a Celestine sandwich. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was too close. Anyway. Uh, you would have fit nicely in a sandwich. Anyway. Like, oh, thanks, <laughs> man. Uh, as you continue, though. Eventually, you make your way to Drosgar's Crag proper. Well, it seems like we're getting closer here. He nods up towards the volcano. That thing's not going to, like, explode or anything, is it? No, it's been... No? No, it's been quiet for some time. Well, that's what I mean. It's been quiet for a long time. Drosgar's Crag erupted almost a thousand years ago. So, well before my time. Yeah, it's been a long time. (laughs) Yes. Grim almost accidentally let slip that he's actually Torag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> During the ancient time. During a horrible event known as the Rending. It was actually a rather unpleasant time. Clove stares into the distance, wondering why she went on a trip that's all full of tour guide thingies relating to dwarves. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm the only one that I'm actually very interested by all the dwarviness I, I never of this. Get to this hear this stuff, so Amaranth, yeah. Amaranth and I am very interested in learning some dwarven lore. Clove is 15 and only cares about finding these herbs to help people in the town. She's not a learned girl. That's true. You haven't got the <laughs> love of teenager. learning. Amaranth needs to give you the love of learning. She likes learning I mean, about plants. And uh, Celestine speaks it. Dwarven, so I imagine she actually is kind of into this stuff too, but she, she can't let Grim know. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, Grim's whole idea is trying to find a way to entertain these children for the hours long walks that we have to do through the woods. Okay, we are clever. <laughs> we know how to do it on our own. Let's be honest, Estrella probably sings to herself the whole time we're going through the forest. Unless we got a stealth. And then she only hums. Yeah. It was not always called Drosgar's Crag, actually. What was it called before? Torax Crag. Oh, so the Drosgar oh. took it over? Oh, it erupted and in essence was responsible for the destruction of one of the five kingdoms. Oh. Or at the very least, well. the, the capital at the time and the fall of its, its leadership. That sounds pleasant. Well, it's a very long story. Maybe something that we can get into once we're back home, safe, sitting around a table, perhaps with a few mugs of L or some nice apple cider. Cider sounds good. Mm. Well, that's good. We're heading to dwarf things. <laughs> His dwarf senses this, are tingling. This looks like a dwarf forest. The trees are shorter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was that was the old cell phone right there. <laughs> yes, the ground is rockier this way. Stronger foundations. Uh, okay. Are we getting close now? Are we pretty close to the monastery? Yes, and in fact, it takes you several hours to get there. You don't arrive until a little past midday. All right, well, when we start to get close, I can sneak up and see if there's anything around the front door. That that seems good. Well, I could accompany you if you like. Yeah, I was about Uh, to say, I don't know if you should go by yourself. I'm pretty stealthy. Celestine looks down at the dwarf. I mean, I've got a plus four. I've got a plus seven. I've got a plus six. Yeah. I've got a plus Mine's seven. A seven. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm not hugely <laughs> stealthy, but I, I'm stealthy. All right. Stealthy. So the rogue and the fighter are going to go. <laughs> I think I'd probably be the better choice to go with her. I'm very good at sneaking about. I used to do a lot more scouting, but I will admit that if I've learned nothing here, it's that I'm a little rusty. It kind of stretches one of his knees as they pop. I'm I'll, just. I'll uh, watch the elders. <laughs> Amaranth just looks at Clove when he, she says elders. With Clove a, gives like, the sweetest smile. <laughs> he, gets that, he gets that look in his face when he's just like, a student just said something rude to me, but is it worth me fighting over? <laughs> no. She, you did say that you're over two centuries old. You can't blame the girl for saying you're an elder. Well, I'm not particularly old for an elf. Amaranth is still 50 years younger than I am. Wow. Celestine 
fox eyes with clove and nods like yeah you're staying with the elders <laughs> <laughs> like I getcha we're gonna leave somebody back here with an expert perception score skill <laughs> that's really what we need <laughs> All right, so I guess uh, Celestine and uh, Estrella will move forward. Very well. The two of you move forward, rounding into a small valley that ends at the base of Droskar's Crag with a single stone edifice at the end. The structure stands maybe, maybe about 10 feet tall or so. The structure itself is surrounded by a curtain wall. A pair of pair of darkwood doors frame the uh, gatehouse. There's also a watchtower to the right-hand side of the structure that goes up an additional floor beyond the actual structure's height. Several of the walls are crumbled in places, though it still looks sturdy enough that honestly you wouldn't want to approach it uh, in some sort of military campaign. Let me go on ahead and get some stealth checks here. Give me just a second. Celestine and Estrella. The two of you begin approaching closer to the monastery. There are a few things of interest. The first, there are a pair of stone braziers in front of the in front of the gate. They're unlit and they don't appear to have been used in some time. The doors also don't look exceptionally sturdy at this point. Compared to the stone of the rest of the structure, even the dark wood here is starting to rot and molder. The last thing both of you note as you approach Tucked away behind each brazier is the sleeping form of a wolf. They don't seem to have noticed you at this point. You can take them. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> just just go in there and backstab them like the rogue that you are. Yeah, but I don't think Estrella's going to be okay with that. <laughs> well, can't do anything about that. Do we go ahead or should we go back for everyone else? Our Celestine motions for... Uh, us to return to the others. See, the mountain range actually has two mountains here. Uh, they're separated okay, so by some distance. Okay, so close asleep. Close asleep. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Longingly at anything that's not here. Amaran's literally sitting there taking notes <laughs> in his journal. Actually, this when volcano you, is the largest up. volcano in Evistan. Oh, 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 good, you're back. Um, what, what, uh, what'd you see? I'll tell you more later, Amaranth. I look forward to it. Hmm. What did I miss? Was it interesting dwarven lore? Tell us it what you was saw. It was fascinating. There are wolves. Oh. Yes. Oh. Uh, if there's wolves, I, I don't see them chasing you. Well, there, there are two wolves asleep behind braziers that are in front of the doors to the monastery. Did one of them and look the larger looks than like the other? If you were to breathe on it, it would fall in. And no, they were about the same size. Maybe we could be really nice to them, and then they would be our friend. Did they look that well would be my fed? Hope. Did they look well fed? They seem to be relatively well fed. At the very least, they neither one appeared to be starving. They don't look they to be Reggie didn't... overstuffed, though, I'm assuming. No. They, I mean, they look healthy, not skinny or like Reggie. I put Reggie, Reggie squeaks in. pathetically. I put Reggie back in your pocket because we're going to go into a fight, maybe. Yep, sounds good. Well, um, if they were skinny, then perhaps they could be outcasts. But if they're staying outside, then they're probably there must on be... watch. There's an intelligence And there must direct. be another way in, then, because, like I said, the dwar- the doors are still standing. Uh, I'm assuming with, uh, I don't know if I need to make a dwarven lore to recall knowledge. Yeah, that would be what it would be. Yeah. Uh, whether or not there would be another entrance to this place or anything like that. You mull over it for a moment, thinking back to similar structures that you've seen in your time. A monastery of this sort would absolutely be defendable, you don't believe they would make any sort of back entrance or side passage or anything like that unless it was incredibly well hidden. Mm -mm. So more likely than not, this is going to be our sole entryway. There's probably another entrance somewhere, maybe leading into the underground at levels or an escape route, but it would take us days, weeks of searching to possibly find it. We don't have time. Mm. What if if we just approach very carefully and we are nice, and we see if they will be nice to us. Uh, we could perhaps attempt. They are wild animals. I don't possess a particular skill with those. Well, what if they're with that war guy? That's my concern. They seem to be posted out here as watch, which is something wolves don't traditionally do. But a warg, especially one that's dealt with military matters before, perhaps amongst the uh, hobgoblins, may employ such tactics. 
I hate to be cruel, but killing wolves is something I've done before for their pelts to sell in town, and if we have to get past them to get the mushrooms, then it's just unfortunate. Yeah, but wolves are good for the forest, too. If we just keep killing a bunch, that's not good either. I wish I was a druid. Why don't I have druid levels? That's your mistake, Jessica. It's not always playing a druid. I know. Um, <laughs> well, well, you we, have nature, though. Our only yeah. option is to approach, and perhaps we can... They will attack. Well, perhaps the warg has communicated to them our desire for a peaceful passage. If they we attack, we'll need to defend ourselves. Yeah. If we can, again, they're being led by wargs are notoriously evil creatures. Hmm. Well, I mean, are, are they evil by nature or are they evil because something made them that way? They're usually evil because they were raised that way. So maybe this one's not evil. Perhaps. Let's see if it can speak with us. All right. Let's go. Yeah, I know. We would also want to keep an eye out for warg puppies. Oh! <gasps> <laughs> no. Celestine is like all over this. I'm gonna uh, take a druid level. We have a Reggie. We do not need another mascot. I have a warg pupper. Huh? Oh my god. Oh Gracious. my god. I oh love it so much. Celestine's like, oh my god, an intelligent wolf to be my hunting partner. Yes. <laughs> Who can control yes. other wolves. <laughs> yeah. Who <laughs> can tell other I'll wolves. Hey man, just like, don't. <laughs> hey man, all what's right, up? Well. Yeah, apparently this wolf I... is a surfer dude in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, could you just like not? First I was like, just, just whoa. vibe on out of here. Then I was like, man. whoa. Then I was like, whoa. Then I was like, whoa. All right, we approach the wolves. I, I will pull my weapon before we go up there. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll Grim, pull my your crossbow shield out as well. even just for a little extra oomph. I assume Grim has his shield out as well. Yes. So, yeah. Um, actually, uh, yeah, I guess for approaching, I'll uh, go ahead and take the action to have it raced. Yeah, that makes sense. You it's can an actually explore do action. That. Yep. Indeed. So you approach somewhat slowly, though, middle, you're trying to be cautious. I guess trying. Are you going in stealthy or are you just going to try to. I think we're just going to appro- approach like cautiously and slowly and hope the wolves don't eat our faces. Yeah, Chloe's going to try to be nice and look non-threatening and stuff. Yeah, right now my stealth and my perception are the same, so I don't okay. really, yeah. Well, I'll approach them openly because we're going to try to be peaceful. Try. So you begin your approach. You see the monastery looming before you. Its gates large and even in its dilapidated state still rather impressive. You notice the two wolves uh, sleeping away behind the braziers as you approach. At maybe about 30 feet or so, they notice, as you know, none of you are taking any necessary st- or any steps to hide the noise you make. You're probably not like ghost screaming or anything either, but. You know. Good puppies. Uh, nice puppies. Are either of you able to understand me? <laughs> We're here no? to be friends. No. The wolves look over, shake their heads for a moment as they notice you. Was that shaking your head no or yes? (laughs) (laughs) Once for no, bark twice for yes. Yes. (laughs) Uh, They're howling. What does that mean? Uh, So anyway. I think it means roll for initiative. (laughs) (laughs) Now, they do howl, though, as they notice you and begin to run in your direction. And I will need initiative from the party. Bad puppies. I don't think they're friendly. (laughs) Uh, My rolls. I rolled good. Okay. Clove. A 13 for a 19. 19. Impressive. All right. Amaranth. I rolled a 6 for a 9. Oh, dear. Yep. Celestine. Celestine rolled a 14 for a 19. All right. Um, the two of you can just choose who goes first. You don't really roll off anymore. Uh, Celestine can go first. All right. All right. Astrea. Uh, I rolled a 19 for a 25. All righty. And Grim. I've broken my string of 17s <gasps> with incredible. an 18. Oh, oh okay. Was 22. Nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Grim's shaking off the rust. <laughs> yeah. mm. All right, Estrella, you have the first initiative as the wolves begin to move from around the braziers, so they haven't actually moved very far yet. Um, 
I don't want to hurt the wolves, so... Estrella's gonna uh, move the 15... Is that 25 feet or 20 feet? To the side of the... Yes, to the side of the brazier. Uh, but she is going to attack non-lethally. She's so hoping maybe move. she can just knock them out and then we don't have to hurt the wolfies. All right. So, rapier in hand, uh, you approach, juking to the side of the brazier. Go ahead and roll your attack roll. And it is a minus two or minus four? Minus two. Minus two. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> I rolled a two for an 11 minus two, which is a nine. Oh, yeah. a nine does not hit your target, unfortunately. Yeah. That was much better. Uh, nice. Uh, that still gives me a 21, though. I rolled a 19. Wow. <laughs> All right. Yeah, 21 hits your target. Go ahead and roll damage. Wow. Uh, for three points of non-lethal damage. Very well. You approach, striking down toward the wolf with your pommel as it slides out of the way. Though you adjust your aim, striking it in the side of the jaw as it lets out a brief whimper. But uh, yeah, you smashed into it. Go to sleep, it. go to sleep, go to sleep. <laughs> Sadly, it is not yet, but you've definitely heard it <laughs> as we get to Grim. All right, uh, Grim's going to move 20 feet forward, banking a bit to the right as he closes in on the wolf that Estrella is fighting. Yeah, so just on the other side of the brazier from her. So he uses first action to move up to there. He'll use his second action to swing his hammer at the wolf. Sounds good. And since you raised your shield, you already count as having it raised for this first round of combat. So Yes. All right, so we're looking at a Rolled a 13 for a 19. A 19 strikes your target. All right. Boom. That is a solid 11 points of damage as I rush into Dang. the fray. I cannot Ow. do better than that. <laughs> well, barring a critical. Well, yeah. You swing your hammer down with a bone shattering force as you hear something snap. Aww. You think you broke one of the wolf's ribs as it turns towards you. It's just doing its job. So, yeah, you yep. do have one action remaining. The wolf is still standing. You think it's actually still got some fight left in it, though it is favoring its left side. Uh, if Estrella says that, I mean, it's going to be a Hail Mary anyway, so sure, I'll take the minus two. So All it's right. going to be a collective minus seven on this attack, so. <laughs> Indeed. There's always a chance. Nope. Uh, <laughs> that's an adjusted two. Oh, <laughs> dear. <laughs> Yeah, two doesn't hit. Fortuitously, yeah. they don't actually have any uh, reactions that trigger on a critical miss, though. All right. Yep. And I have my shield up, so that's yeah. it for me. All right. So we go from Grim to Celestine. Celestine will run forward, so she's standing next to Grim. The two of them in front of the front doors and in between the brazier. Sounds good. And then she will uh, swing her elven curve blade around at the other wolf. All right. So you move, make an action to attack. She rolls a seven for a 14. A 14 sadly does not strike your target. The wolf lightly jumps out of the way just in time. All right. She will swing again. So I roll a 15. So minus five gets me a 17. All right, 17 does strike your target as you adjust your aim. Nice. Does this work like first edition and since it hasn't gone, it's flat-footed? The Game Master determines whether or not an enemy is flat-footed in the first round. Mm -hmm. So do I get So for instance, if, you, if we were aware of them and they were aware of us and we had a conversation and then we both decided to attack, no one's flat-footed because okay. everyone knew everyone was coming. So jokes. In this case, I will say that the wolf's flat-footed because they just woke up. Okay. So, yeah. Uh... Celestine yep. does 13 points of damage. <laughs> Ow. You strike in. The wolf howls with pain. Uh, blood coming forth from its from a wound across its side. It staggers back, though it still bears its teeth in your direction. Uh, Clove, it is your turn if you want to go ahead and go. Uh, Clove stares at the wolves and, like, doesn't necessarily do anything, and Clove delays. Okay. So, Clove delays. Uh, the wolves are going next. Clove doesn't want to hurt the wolves, and the wolves haven't hurt anybody, so Clove doesn't want to deal with it because it's scary, and so she's going to stay back here with Amaranth. Okay, that's fine. I just fair wanted enough. to make sure you knew. So, I'm role-playing, Ross. That's fair. No, that's absolutely <laughs> cool. 
All right, so the wolves spring into action. The one uh, being har- or being harried by Grim and Estrella is going to go on ahead and go for Grim because Grim slammed that hammer down into him. That's fair. Yeah. It lashes out. Wow. It rolls really high and gets a 24 to strike. Yeah, that'll hit me. Yeah. <laughs> Not a critical success, but that's definitely a hit. Yeah, that's definitely a palpable hit. It bites on for four points of damage. It will then use its second action to go on ahead and use its knockdown. Ugh. Tripping Grim up and pulling Uh-oh. him down to the ground. Oh, no. All right, I'm prone. It'll then lash out for its third attack because the knockdown yep. also counts as an attack. Crud. Oh, it doesn't have to roll for the knockdown? Mm-mm. Nope. No, it's automatic. <laughs> Whoa, no. It's automatic as long as it hit its last attack hit. However, I don't think that a one is going to hit Grim even prone. Nope, not even flat-footed. Yep, so it strikes in but is unable to get past your, um, it's unable to get past your griefs. The other one will attack Celestine because, let's be real, she just sliced it up pretty badly. Yeah, yeah. Well, its first attack doesn't go great. I don't think a 13 hits you. No, that will not hit Celestine. The wolf snarls its jaws forward, but Celestine hops back out of the way. Oh, no. It attacks again with a perfect 20. Oh, my God, oh, no. Ross. Uh-oh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's a 24. Uh, That'll hit, in, which does not exceed my <laughs> AC. That's yeah, still going to crit you. Well, but it's a perfect, perfect 20, 20, so it goes so up to the next critical. step. As long as it hits, yeah. it's a confirmed critical. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, but Grim does bellow out, Track shield her! And I'll activate my retributive strike, which I can't do the strike part of it, but it does knock mm. off the three, first three points of damage you take from that. Hey. That's better, not that well, good. That is good because the wolf rolls max damage. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Wow. So that's 16 oh. before... Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Holy cow! So it, that before knocks off Grim's three, shield. so I have five hit points. Oh, wow. Wow, that would have <laughs> knocked me straight down to wow. zero. So I'm going to steal some of Rick's thunder as the wolf bites in with a vicious hit. Vicious. Vicious. I knew I should have copyrighted that. <laughs> Lashing at toward, uh, <laughs> toward Celestine's thigh before it pulls her down using its knockdown ability. Celestine lets out a shriek. Yeah, Celestine, you are currently on the ground, though the wolf is out of actions after doing hey, that. Hey, you're on the ground next to me. <laughs> yeah, ground buddies. Clove's gonna re-enter. Clove re-enters the initiative. Uh, Clove's whole face goes white uh, as she screams, "It's not the time to be a coward, sis!" And runs. Does a sudden well, okay, a and a rages, and then B does a sudden charge directly toward the wolf that um, just went after Celestine. So essentially she can do two move actions and strike at the end of it. So she'll essentially... She'd probably just go straight past Celestine jumping over. Sure. That makes the most sense for her to do. She didn't have her weapon out, so she will just hit this wolf with her fist. Okay. Alrighty then. She'll pull a weapon next time. Okay, that's... Alright, uh, a 20 to hit? A 20 strikes your target. I your think. fist sl- uh, slamming across the wolf's side. Punch the wolf out. Max damage. Oh, dear. Goodness. <laughs> uh, ten points of damage as she punches the wolf in the oh, head. Oh, jeez. <laughs> On the plus side, it's non-lethal. It is non-lethal. Yeah. You punch the wolf. It groggily blinks up at you, just barely able to stand at this point. Get off my friend. It whimpers somewhat. Um, Trying to be nice to you. From Clove, we go to Amaranth. There are two wolves. One seems barely conscious at this point. Oh, The other's still got some fight in it. All right, Amaranth. Both Celestine and Grim are on the ground. Yeah, Amaranth will uh, kind of just go, oh, dear, oh, dear. And he runs forward because that's just what he does in this situation. He's going to get to uh, five feet behind Grim, 20 feet to there, and then cast Mm -hmm. Electric Arc, uh, which somehow is not going to hit Clove, even though she's in between the two of them because magic. So I'm gonna need both of them to make reflex saves um, because it I makes can't an roll, arc so like I... a rainbow. Rainbow, yeah. yeah. Electric rainbow. Electric my rainbow. Reflex is my worst save, so thanks well, for not making me do one. Yeah. Well, reflex saves. Okay. Yes, which I mean, it's probably a pretty good reflex saves, but I can't roll for anything. We're in dire straits here. 
So the wolf that Celestine... Are we? No, sorry. The wolf... The wolf that Clove just punched rolls a natural one. Oh, yes. it's disoriented. <laughs> and I don't think a 10 would normally succeed, which oh, means it it's a critical failure on its Ooh, part. Ooh, crit fails. So uh, the other one does much better and gets a 21. Okay, so it saves. Okay, so it takes half. Yeah. But I believe the one that crit failed takes double. It does. Get oh. it. hey <laughs> All right, come on now. Ah, jeez. Uh, so that's six, so three for the wolf that uh, saved, and 12 for the one that didn't. Hey. Oh, Owie. Right. Lightning sizzles between your two foes, making an arc that does appear vaguely like a rainbow for half a second between the two of them. The one Grim and Estrella are fighting just sort of shudders for a moment before shaking its head, a small amount of smoke coming off of its body. The other one just seizes and shudders and falls. Oh dear, I think I overdid it. It stops moving entirely. Definitely overdid it. Celestine gestures down to her leg as she looks up at Amaranth from the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I think Celestine's just like, no, no, that's just the right amount of well done. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So, Amar oh, no, you moved too. So I believe that was yes, your I three did. actions. That was. Okay. Sorry, I got to keep remembering when people move. Uh, Astrea, it's your turn. Astrea is desperately going to try to knock this out before he does that again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Astrea, go ahead and roll your attack roll. All right. My first attack... I rolled an 11, which gives me a 20 minus 2, which is an 18. An 18 does strike your target. For two points of non-lethal damage. You slam it again with the pommel of your rapier, but it, it certainly still hurts the thing. You boop it on the snoot. <laughs> Very well. But it does not collapse. Bad, it's bad still wolf. going. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> bad wolf. So, bad wolf. Bad wolf. Oh. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Christopher Eccleston. My second roll, I roll a 15... Uh, oh wait, I've, uh, which still with the minus two and the minus five gives me a 17. A 17 strikes your target. Nice. You slam in again. God, this halfling is amazingly accurate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rachel's rolling them dice. <laughs> that'd be for five points of non-lethal. All right. I think Rachel's also rocking like a plus nine to hit. I am rocking a plus nine to wow. hit. Wow. Fighters Dang. are experts. I've got a plus seven and that, that beats me. Yeah, my plus yeah. six is kind of sad over here. Mine's also a seven. Please tell me that gets it. Astrea, you slam it on the nose <laughs> as it backs up before you slam it again at the top of the head. It shakes its head for a moment as if trying to continue the fight before it slumps over to the ground, unable to move. You have a momentary heart attack almost before you notice that it is still breathing. Okay, it's, he's down. Let's just leave it be. How uh, tall are these brazers, Ross? Like, can Celestine, like, use them to pull herself up, or are they kind of low to the ground, or...? Um, they're, they're fairly tall. They're about four feet tall overall. You'd think that probably the dwarves would... Honestly, even a number of humans would need to probably use a uh, pole or something to light them on the inside, because you'd have to reach over the lips. So, right. yeah, you could pull yourself up. She, she reaches over, pulls herself up, favoring her not-mangled leg... Amarantha pulls out a uh, minor healing potion and hands it over to you. Oh, thank you. Grim helps Celestine up to her feet as hands glow and powers, channels the power of the gods through him into her for six points. You fought well. Thank you. Stupid wolves. She would still pop the potion. How much does it do now in 2E? A minor healing potion restores 1D8 hit points. They do cost four gold pieces apiece, so... Yeah. I spent uh, all my gold on that. So Lestine gets five back, so she's not quite at full, but she's looking much better. Thank you, both of you. I figure Estrella kind of drags the wolf over to, like, the corner so he's not just out in the open. That was excellently done, Estrella. Yeah, I was, I was hoping we wouldn't have to stab him. Yeah. Estrella, you know, for dealing with the, with the wolves non-lethally, I will go on ahead and award you a hero point. Oh, yeah. look at you, you friggin' nice. hero. I think that's worth it. It's almost like I'm heroic or yeah. something. All big Excellent. heroes here. <laughs> Amaranth will, uh, will walk up behind everybody as I suppose y'all are dusting yourselves off. Uh, 
Clove, why were you calling out for a, your sister? A sister? I wasn't calling out for a sister. But no, then you you did. Why, you said it's no time to be a coward sister. I wasn't talking to you. Then who were I, you talking to? I didn't assume you to? were, given that I'm male. But you did talk to somebody. Who is he your sister? a valid point. First of all, it's hard to tell because you're an elf. <laughs> Second of all... <laughs> No, it's Celestine kind of quirks um, an eyebrow. Like, really? Clove, that's a little racist. That's so racist. Whatever. It's true. Look at him. He's got long hair and a little ponytail. He wears like a little fancy outfit. I don't know. I think I he's don't know kind of elves. I think he's just, kind of just big dashing. dapper. Whatever. Clove, uh, this is very like rude. the third time this has feelings. happened. Are we not going to address this? I feel like this is something that needs to be addressed. I'm not sure I quite like you when you rage. You're, you're a very different person. I don't care. Oh. What's your name? Clove's eyes narrow. Rosemary. Wait, what? Oh, what, good. You can't hear the, now? She's possessed. That mm. makes a lot more sense, though. Miss Rosemary, you're quite rude, and I demand an apology. I'm not apologizing to you. <laughs> Emery just blinks. <laughs> so who are you? Cause After a few moments, Clove, you come back to yourself. Clove's like, I'm Clove? Did, um, some, uh, did something Clove, happen? Can I, can I ask you a probably somewhat personal question? Do you just uh, remember fighting those wolves? Uh, con- con- yes. Uh, of course, yes. I definitely do. Do you know someone named Rosemary? Clove blanches a little bit. Yeah, why? Is she your very rude sister? Yeah, she just told us that um, you were Rosemary. And says some very offensive things about my ponytail and my gender. Amaranth, not and important at the moment. Um, what? Yeah, you just I... said you were Rosemary. I, I'm, I'm, cl- are you okay? Astrea. Could I have a moment? Yeah, I think we need one. He places a hand on your shoulder, leads you off to the side. Probably Amaranth as well. Leave Celestine there to keep an eye on <laughs> Clove. Clove's like, what happened? Oh, you got really upset and your face went kind of pale and then you tried to kill the wolves and you get really rude and you called Amaranth a girl. And then you said your name was Rosemary. <laughs> oh, uh, oh. And you get like that every time we get into a fight. Yeah, that's happened recently. I don't know. I I was hoping it wasn't happening. Estrella. Mm-hmm. I think perhaps we should wait before we press this point. Yeah. Now, one of two things is happening here, and neither of them are exactly good to delve into at this time. That's that's fair. Uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to put anybody in jeopardy. I mean, oh, it's... it probably will. Well, I mean, she's still helping during the fights. It's not like it's gonna... Well, I, actually, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little concerned. Amongst our people, we have berserkers. Warriors who use their rage to fuel them. They are not reliable, but they are definitely a potent weapon. And she seems to be something approaching that. The well, books of Magram tell me of damaged souls. Either we're dealing with possession or we're dealing with someone who's fractured. Neither of those sound particularly good. In this case, I don't think she's any more or less dangerous to us than she would be normally. However, she may not necessarily be the most reliable if we need to take something like a diplomatic course. Well, um, I don't think like... upsetting her further would be a good idea at this time. Well, it seems like she only become this other person and very certain... Hmm. Moments. She seems to have some control, and I think we should trust her for now. She has been nothing but helpful up until this point. Oh, I had every intention of, of going forward. Yeah, we're Good. fine. And Amaranth. Yes. You're a very masculine man. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't. <laughs> don't. I don't know if I would say that. I mean, it just. <laughs> Gracious, don't, I should. Don't let her words and anger upset you. I find your outfit very <sighs> dapper. Celestine you. calls you dashing. You have a masterful it's tailor. <laughs> okay, we should we should probably head back though. Celestine's standing by the broke by the crumbling doors with her arms crossed over her chest, giving you guys like, uh, well, can we any day now? Look, <laughs> Clove is standing next to Celestine, like, 
super embarrassed. Now she's got really red cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I figure Estrella walks up to Clove and uh, she kind of gives her a nod. She's like, thanks for your help. Uh, okay, uh, you're welcome. We all did excellent in that last fight. You particularly Clove and Amaranth. Actually, all of you. I think we're starting to come together as a an effective unit. Well, shall we then? But Celestine will uh, walk over to the rotting darkwood doors and... Hold, 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 hold up. I need ten minutes to pray if we want me to be able to use that lay on hands again. <laughs> oh, that would be probably a good idea. Mm. So I suppose as you stand there with your hand raised for ten minutes and then I'll stand well, up just by knees off. Look down. over and just kind of nod at you. Once, if you must. once Grim is done praying, Celestine raises a hand, puts her palm on the door and just kind of pushes. The door swings straight down as it's been removed from its hinges some time ago, it seems. <laughs> oh, my. It lands with a loud thunk what? as it was just barely standing to begin with. Well, that seems like kind of the shoddy work that Droskar would do. Well, if they didn't <laughs> hear us from the howl, they've definitely heard us now. Um, the other one, just barely able to stand up because of the support from the one that uh, Celestine just pushed, also falls. That's loud. I was hoping Ross was going to say the other one is also an animated object <laughs> and falls on top of you. <laughs> 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 down on you. Well, <laughs> Ross time loves to these find animated objects. Some yeah. mushrooms. Yeah, that should they should be near iron, I think, right? So yes. we need to look for a forge. Or more mm -hmm. likely than not, if there's maybe some deposits underground. You push the doors open. They almost comically scatter dust and debris everywhere. Celestine point, you know, raises her arm and gestures inside and takes a little half bow. <laughs> <laughs> and as you begin to make your way inside into the courtyard of the Dwarven Monastery, we will pick up here and continue our adventure next time. Bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Very dun, nice. Dun, dun. Excellent. Yes, and nobody so. died. Oh, not for like a try. Find the Path Ventures is an officially licensed partner of Paizo Incorporated. Hollow's Last Hope is copyright 2007. Hollow's Last Hope and the Game Mastery module line are trademarks of Paizo. All Game Mastery images are property of Paizo and used with permission.